Hello everybody, this is Miss Jessica from EVPL McCullough and today I am so excited to share with you something that is so much fun and a little different than what we've done in the past. So we are going to be experimenting with watercolors. Now if you stop by one of our locations starting the week of January 11th, you can pick up your very own watercolor kit. So we will have these available, our take and makes, and inside you will find a set of watercolors, some watercolor paper, and something that I'm gonna show you how to use today, which might seem a little odd at first, some salt packets, just regular old salt that you would get from your kitchen. So, we are going to be doing a really, really fun project. We'll also have some tips and tricks in this bag for you. I am going to show you how to make this amazing galaxy picture. And here's another example that I did where I gave my star a little smiley face. Now, on this sheet of paper, it's actually quite big. You can get several projects out of it. So included in our kit, you will also see how to make your very own bookmarks using watercolors. Now, why are we talking about watercolor painting? It's because during the month of January, every year, the Caldecott Award is given to the best illustrator of children's books of the entire year. So we are going to be sharing with you all kinds of fun art projects and different things throughout the month to kind of highlight illustrating and how wonderful it is and how much they contribute to all of our amazing books that we read. Now, if you stick around to the end of the video, I will share with you some of my favorite books that have used watercolors and I'll sh also show you some past winners of the Caldecott Medal and how they used watercolors in their paintings. So you never know. With some practice, you could win an award for your art. That would be pretty neat. Okay, so today to get started, I'm going to be using the watercolors that I got in my take and make kit. We also have a piece of watercolor paper. So I've got my watercolor paper and the watercolor paper is actually this brand. It's Canson Watercolor. Now, if you aren't able to get one of our kits, you can always use regular paper at home. I would even recommend if you have construction paper or cardstock to possibly use that because it's a little bit thicker. And that's what's special about watercolor paper is that it's just really, really thick and made to get water put on it so it won't curl and kind of get all bumpy like some regular paper does. But regular paper works fine too. So we've got our watercolor paper. I also have a ruler, and I'll show you how I'm gonna use that in just a bit. I've got a pencil and an ink pen, and I've got some scissors that I'm going to be using later. We've also got in our watercolor set, it does come with a brush, and I have some extra brushes that I brought from home, and this brush that comes in your kit is amazing, and it is perfect to use but because I'm doing a video and I don't want this to take forever, I did bring some bigger brushes to use just so it'll go a little faster. Okay, we also have paper towels. This is super important. We're using a lot of water. It can get really messy. Now we also need some cups of water, which I have those and they're actually right over there where you can't see them off camera and I forgot to put them over here. But I actually have two cups of water and I'll explain why, why I do that as we're painting. Okay, so I've got all of my supplies. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is, and it's over here, so let me grab it real fast. Some tape. Now, I've got painter's tape. I've also got masking tape, and this is library masking tape, so it's really, really thick. Now, this is the type of tape that you probably want to use if you're going to be taping your paper down because when you pull it up, it doesn't rip the paper. Scotch tape can be used, but it can be a little tricky when you're trying to peel it up and it just is really sticky, so it might tear your paper, and we don't want that. 
so I've got some tape. Now, I've also got a piece of poster board on my desk to help cover my surface so I don't get my desk super messy. So you can always lay something down on your table that you're working on so that it doesn't get too messy. Okay, now first things first, we always, always, always check with our grown up before we're doing any of this to make sure it's okay with them because this can get messy. Plus, it is so much fun. They might want to see what you're doing and see the amazing art that you're creating while you're doing it. So you want them to be there and you wanna make sure that it's okay with them. Okay, so we're gonna get started. I'm gonna show you how we're using all of these fun things. And here we go. Okay, so we are ready to get started. So I've got my watercolors. I've got my two cups of water, my paper towels. They're handy, they're just going to be over to the side. I've got my piece of watercolor paper some salt packets, and then I also have some paintbrushes. So the one that came in my kit, and then I'm also going to be using a different one just because, like I said, we have to go a little quicker with this video just because of time. I don't want you to have to sit here and watch this forever. So this just helps me finish a little faster. I've got some rulers, because I'm going to need those, a pencil, and some scissors. We've also got our tape. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you first is that we can get several projects out of just one sheet of paper. So this project that we're going to be doing, it is half of the sheet of watercolor paper that you're going to be getting in your kit. It's also another part of the sheet, and then we still have some left over for some bookmarks. Now I drew this on a sheet of construction paper just so that you can see that this is half of the sheet of watercolor paper. And then once I have those halves, I'm gonna cut this one in half, so right at the four and a half inches mark, and that still leaves me enough for three bookmarks. So pretty, pretty neat that we can get a lot of projects out of one sheet of paper. All right, so we're gonna start cutting our paper. So I've got my sheet of watercolor paper and it honestly, it does not matter which side you use. Uh, one side is a little more bumpy than the other. It really, really doesn't matter. It can, you can use either side. So I've got my ruler and I've got this really handy ruler to help us just so I'm not taking too long doing this. Okay, so I'm going to measure halfway down my piece of paper. Now my paper is 12 inches long, so I'm gonna measure right at the six inches mark. And I'm gonna draw a really soft line so I know where to cut my paper. Now I will warn you that watercolor paper is pretty thick. So if you try to fold it first to know where to cut, it will wrinkle all around the part that you fold just because it's thick paper. So I wouldn't recommend folding it, but if that's the easiest way for you to cut, then go right ahead. There is nothing wrong with that. Okay, now we're gonna cut our paper in half. I also like to do my projects on about a half a sheet of watercolor paper when I am painting at home just because I don't want my project to be too overwhelming and too big. Now just about any age can use watercolors. They're really, really fun to use and not too terribly difficult to use either. And I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks real quick. All right, so this is just my, I'm actually gonna use this as just a sample piece of paper to show you some things. So I've got my brush. Now I have two cups of water. Now I like to do that because when you're washing off your brush in between using it for colors, it will start to get very dirty, very cloudy, and it will start to make other colors turn colors. So if I've used blue a lot and I'm washing off my brush, 
and then I want to go and use yellow. It's going to get some of that blue water into my yellow and then it kind of makes it yucky. So I always use two cups and just kind of go back and forth from a dark one to a light one. And since it's water, you can always, always change out your water pretty easily. Just go and rinse your cup out and get some new water. Not a problem. Okay, so one thing I'm gonna show you is that we're going to wake up our paints. Now, right now, they are dry. Nothing's going on. So we need to wake them up with water because water plus color equals watercolors. So I'm gonna get some water on my brush and kind of wake up my watercolor. Now what's fun about watercolors is that no two projects are alike. They are always different. So as I go to paint, you will see how bright blue that is. Now, if I don't get any water and I just go back to my paint, it will be pretty dark. And after a while, it will want to stop working. So we need to add some more water. Now, one thing that's neat about watercolors is that once you start, it's kind of dark, but the more that you kind of go along with your brush, it will start to get lighter. And I can just use water to kind of help that along and kind of get that color just kind of fading a little bit. So those are some fun tricks with watercolors. And I'm gonna wipe, kind of rinse off my brush. Now, before we get started, we have to do a mantra because it is very important that you understand that this is fun. So I'm gonna switch the camera real quick so we can do our mantra before we start and then we will get. Okay, before we get started with our painting, this is very important. We are going to make some promises to ourselves. So I want you to take your paintbrush and raise your paintbrush and you're going to repeat after me. This is very important. I will be creative. I will be bold. Mistakes are happy accidents. And I will have fun. All of those things are very important when you're painting or when you're doing any kind of art because everything is supposed to be fun. Do not let this stress you out or give you anxiety. This is supposed to be fun. And that's why mistakes are always happy accidents. You're going to be creative, you're going to be bold, and we're gonna have a lot of fun. Okay, let's get started. All right, we're back and we are ready. So this was just my practice sheet, just so that you could see how they work. So I'm actually gonna put this over to the side and get my clean half sheet. Now I'm actually gonna tape this down and I do recommend taping down because even though it is thick paper, it will curl just a little bit when you start to get it wet. It will also move around a lot and I don't want that. So I'm gonna get really close to the edge. Tape that down. Then I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. So now my paper won't move around. It'll be a lot easier for me to do my painting that way. And it'll help keep my paper flat. Okay, now again, this is the brush that comes on your kit. It is perfect, it is wonderful, it works amazingly well, but it's a little tiny. And so I'm gonna switch to a bigger brush just because we need this to go a little faster. Now I'm going to make a galaxy of stars. This is one that I made earlier. Now the amazing thing about watercolors is that if I try to make this exact thing again, it won't happen. Some of the colors will be different. Some of the blending will be different. I can never repeat this because that's what the amazing thing about watercolors is that when they react to the water, they will always do something a little different. But I'm going to do something very, very similar. I'm going to paint an amazing starry galaxy and you can do your galaxy however you want to. If you really, really want to do your galaxy in black, you can. If you want your galaxy to be green, it can. You can do whatever you want. That's the amazing thing about our imagination is that we can use it to do so many different things. Okay, so I'm actually going to do mine with blue to start. So we're gonna wake up our watercolor and I'm gonna start painting on. And 
and I'll show you this brush, like I said, is perfectly fine. It's wonderful. I actually did several paintings with it. It's just that it's a little tinier, so it would take a lot longer versus this brush right here that I can make the paint go a lot bigger of an area, a lot quicker. All right, and there's no special way to hold your paintbrush. I would hold it just like a pencil um, or whatever is easiest for you to grasp it. Now I'm gonna add some green into my galaxy because I like colors and I kind of want it to be colorful. I'll add some more green. I wonder what your favorite color is, if you have a favorite color. Now notice that in between the colors, I'm gonna go back and rinse my brush out. And I'm gonna add some more blue back in here. Now, I know that when I look up at the night sky, it is lots of different colors, depending on where you're at, especially if you're closer to the city, then it's a little harder to see them and you might get a lot of different lights that you're seeing. But I know that it can be dark, so I'm gonna get some black in here too. And we're gonna add that to our galaxy. Now, once I've got some black going, I'm gonna go back to my blue and add that back in. Now, sometimes I don't need to get water on my brush before I put it down, and that will make it just a little bit darker because it doesn't have that water to wake it up, but it also makes it kind of fun to experiment with. Okay, I'm gonna start on the other side of my paper. We'll get some blue going here at the top. And you can see my water over here is definitely turning blue because I'm using so much blue when I rinse off my brush. I'm gonna kind of mix my blue in with my green there. All right, and now I'm gonna add some purple. So I know especially when I'm looking at sunsets, you'll see some purple in the sky. So I think that's kind of a fun color to have in your sky. Now I really, really like the color purple, but I also, really, really like the color pink. And I want my purple to look a little more pink. So I'm gonna add some red in there. And I'll kind of make it like a pinky purple, which is really fun. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to my blue. And I wanna blend this just a little bit because it's got that really sharp line right there. So I just get some water and just kind of help mix it together. And if it took away some of that purpley color that I want, guess what? We can always go back and get some more. Okay, and I'm gonna get some more blue. You can see that I have been making a lot of these paintings for fun and practicing because I've almost used up my entire blue paint over here. Okay, now, one thing that is really special about a galaxy is that it has stars. So we're gonna add some stars to our galaxy and that is where we're going to be using our salt packets. Now I'm going to put mine in a little cup and I've already actually got some in here from earlier. So I'm gonna open my salt packet and I'm gonna put it right in just a little cup just to help with pouring this out. 
Okay, so this is amazing. It's almost like a magic trick. Whenever you put salt on wet watercolor, the salt sucks up the color and will leave behind little dots that it takes away the color and kind of makes it look like an amazing galaxy of stars. So that's what we're gonna be doing with our salt. The most important part though, is that your painting has to be wet. So I'm gonna go back through and wet my painting again. So I just put some water on my brush and you can see how I'm moving that color around. So it is definitely getting wet. Now it doesn't have to be soaking wet for it's dripping, but just enough that you can definitely tell it's got water on it. And I'm gonna do this one half and then the other. Now, if you wanna pour your salt packet on, you can, but I will tell you that these pour really fast. So that's why I put mine in a cup so I can just take a pinch and just sprinkle it on there. And you can definitely see already over here where it's starting to work. Okay, so now we're gonna do the other half of my painting. So I'm gonna get it wet again. And if you have to do this a little at a time, like, oh, now I have this section done. And it's definitely super wet right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my salt on there. You can. Cause you wanna make sure to get it before it dries. Okay, so now we're gonna keep going. all of this wet down here so I can have some more sprinkle stars. And you can see too, as I'm adding water, it's changing what I painted earlier. And that is amazing. I love how different it will look depending on how much water or paint I add. Okay, so we're gonna sprinkle some more stars. and you can put as much or as little on this as you want. And if you're looking at an area like this and you're like, huh, that didn't turn out very well. I definitely want some more sprinkle stars over there. I'm gonna just go back, get it wet again, and I am gonna kind of mess up that salt that's already on there. And add some more. Oh, see, I can definitely see that reacting immediately. Good thing I went back to that one. Now this does take a little bit, so you wanna wait until it dries and leave the salt on there until it dries. So we're gonna pause this part of it for a second and I'm gonna show you how to make your stars that we're going to be putting in our galaxy. So we're gonna let this dry and let the salt react. Now if you don't have one of our salt packets, you can just use, it's just iodized salt. You can just use the regular salt that you find in your kitchen. If you have different kinds of salt, you can try different kinds of salt, like kosher salt or the pink Himalayan salt and see what happens if you try different salts. So that's something fun that you can do. All right, so we're gonna pause and I'm gonna show you how to make the stars. Okay, so earlier when I had a full sheet of paper, of my watercolor paper, I cut it in half. And so that leaves me a half that is still blank and still ready to go and get some paint on it. So again, here's my diagram. So I'm gonna cut this half of the paper in half again. So I'm gonna measure out four and a half inches and then we're gonna cut this piece in half. So just like that, so four and a half. So we've got our whole nine inches. I'm gonna measure four and a half and I'm gonna cut it because I'm gonna paint some stars for our galaxy on this part of our paper. Okay, so get my handy ruler out again. And I'm gonna measure to four and a half. So that's right at the middle of our paper. I'm gonna draw just a really light colored line and then I'm now gonna cut this piece in half. Now you can do your stars 
for your galaxy however you would like. If you want all blue stars, you could do blue stars. If you want all red stars, you could do red stars or orange stars. You can do all, like this one I did, yellow stars. This one I mixed the colors up and did different colored stars. Or if you wanna make these into planets, you can. If you wanna make it into an alien that's flying through your galaxy, that would be amazing too. So you can do whatever it is that you like with this. So again, I'm gonna tape my paper down because it does like to curl, especially when it's like a smaller piece like this. And, oops. Now I'm gonna do all yellow again. And I'm gonna actually use the brush that came in my kit because I don't have to do such a big area this time. Now this is why I had my two cups of water because this one is blue and kind of dirty right now. So we're gonna switch over to the clean one. Okay, so I'm gonna get my brush all rinsed out, get some water and I'm gonna wake up my yellow. Wake up yellow. And we're gonna start painting on our paper. Now, if you want to do tie-dyed stars, you could. So you could do all kinds of different colors on here. You could give your stars polka dots. You could do whatever you want. That is the amazing thing about watercolors. All right, so I finished painting my yellow on my paper and I also let it dry. So we're gonna peel the tape off. Now you can draw on this side of the paper, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna flip this over to the blank side. Now I am not the best at drawing stars. So I got a stencil. If you want to freehand it, please, please do. Um, you can make your star any kind of shape, but I have tried to freehand a bigger star and it's always a disaster. They just look weird. So I'm gonna use a stencil for my big star, but for my smaller stars, I'm actually gonna draw those. Now, an easy way to do a star is to start, I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna kind of make the shape of an A and then I'm gonna start from here and I'm gonna go to this point right here so then I'm gonna draw up here. I'm gonna go over here. And now I'm gonna connect them. So I'm gonna connect this point to that point. So then just draw that one down. Now, if you want to do a bunch of stars or little tiny stars, you can. You can do whatever you want. It is your picture. So I'm gonna draw another one so that I can have a couple. And notice, ooh, that point maybe needs to be a little taller, so we'll make that taller. Okay, so when I cut this out, they will be yellow on this side. So now we're gonna cut out our stars. All right, so I've got my stars cut out. Now, I actually wanna give this one a little bit of a smiley face, because I think that'll be fun. So I'm gonna do this with a pencil real quick, so I'm just gonna kind of sketch it out. So there's his little eyes. And there's his little smile. And I'm just gonna use a regular old ink pen, an EVPL ink pen. And we're just going to color in his eyes. You could give him eyelashes if you want. And do whatever you want. And then let's give his little smile. We're also going to give him some little pink cheeks. Now you do not need a lot of water to do this. I'm just gonna wake up my red just a little bit and give him just a little bitty dot here. A little bitty dot there. And now he's got a little smiley face. Now one thing that I did forget to mention earlier, you can use your tape that you've been using, but you also might need some glue because we're actually gonna be gluing our stars to our galaxy. So as you can see, these were the stars that I cut out. So there's where my lines were and I just flipped them over so you can't see the lines and they're all beautiful and yellow. All right, so let's glue our stars down on our galaxy. Oh my 
goodness, look at how the salt changed. What I painted earlier, oh my goodness, look at all these little star dots that we've got. It almost kind of looks like clouds or like a nebula going through our galaxy. This is amazing. Now this does still have some salt on it from earlier. So what you'll wanna do is just brush that off. You can brush that into the trash can, um, outside in the grass. So I'm gonna brush my salt off real fast. And you'll want to wait until it's dry to do that. So I'm gonna throw that salt on there. I'll make sure that gets in the trash earlier, later. Okay, so here's my painting. And now I've got my stars, so we're gonna glue those down. And you can put your stars anywhere you want. This is your painting, you get to be creative. So I'm gonna put him there. And we're actually using collage art to do this also. So not only did we do watercolor, but we're using collage art because we cut our stars out of other paper and added it into our picture. So it's got that layer and almost makes it look like they're popping off of the page. So this is it, this is our finished product. This is my amazing new Star Galaxy painting. Now I still had in my diagram, I still had these three bookmarks that you can make. And if you check out our fun guide that we put in with your kit, and we'll also link that down below, you can see how to make some really, really fun bookmarks. And we'll show you, we have those instructions in the little instruction guide on how to do all these different things. So there's another way that you can keep going with this activity. All right, so if you stay tuned, we are going to talk about the Caldecott Metal next. All right, if you're still with us, we just finished our amazing painting, and we're gonna talk very quickly about the Caldecott Metal. So the Caldecott Metal, and you can see, this is what it looks like when it's on a book, is given to an illustrator of picture books that they consider the best illustration that was done that year. So I'm going to show you very quickly the past five years who has won. So starting in 2016, we have Finding Winnie, and this one was actually done with watercolor. So she likes to, um, it was illustrated by Sophie Blackwell. She actually likes to paint using Chinese ink and watercolor. So she won for illustrating with watercolor. That's pretty neat. Okay, then in 2017, we had Radiant Child, and this one was illustrated by, and I may, I may mispronounce this, and I'm so sorry, Javaka Steptoe, and this one was actually done in a collage style painting. We have Wolf in the Snow, and this one in 2018 was also done in watercolor. It was done in pen in watercolor by Matthew Cordell. So watercolor again won the Caldecott. In 2019, this is so interesting. Sophie Blackwell, who won for Finding Winnie in 2016, she won again in 2019 with Hello Lighthouse. And this was also done with Chinese ink and watercolor. She won two of these. That is a really big accomplishment. And then last year in 2020, we had The Undefeated, and it was illustrated by Kadir Nelson. And this one was actually done with oils. So they painted with oil paints to get this illustration. All right, now I'm just gonna show you some of my favorites. Now, one of my favorites is we have Jerry Pinkney. He likes to do colored pencils and watercolor, so he actually mixes them, and he does some amazing pictures with just watercolors and pencils. Now, he has also won the Caldecott. This book actually won the Caldecott Medal back in 2010, so 11 years ago. And he has so many different books out, 
but he just came out with a brand new one this year. We just got this in December, The Little Mermaid. And look at that, by Caldecott medalist Jerry Pinckney. So he illustrated this one as well, using pencils and watercolors. So it's amazing what watercolors can do. Now also, some others that I really liked this year that were done with watercolors. This one, In the Woods, and this was illustrated by Don Levy, or excuse me, Rob Dunlavy. This was done with watercolors. Now he also did some mixed media and used some digital rendering in this, but this is amazing. It is gorgeous. The different animals that are in here. I'll show you my favorite picture. Look at that bobcat. I bet if I practiced, I could paint that too. Definitely. This one is new this year. And this one's actually a nonfiction book, which means that it's real, that it's about real facts. You are placed in the universe. And this person has been honored before with the Caldecott. And that's Jason Chen. And this was done with watercolors. He also used some gouache and some digital techniques. But... I can definitely see how he did some of these paintings with watercolor. You can almost see the brush strokes. Here's another nonfiction one that came out this year. This was done entirely in watercolors. So we have Grow Secrets of Our DNA, and this was illustrated by Emily Sutton. And all throughout here, it is so colorful and beautiful, and you can see all the different watercolors all throughout. It's amazing. That's my favorite picture in there. Now, just some favorites that I have that were done in watercolor. Blue Chicken by Deborah Friedman. As you are reading this, you will see where they spill the water and everything starts turning blue. And you can actually see how they use the watercolor with water all throughout here. It's amazing. Now, another one of my favorites is David Weissner. Now he has actually won the Caldecott Medal three times and we have some of his books. So this is one of them, Tuesday. You might be really familiar with this one or Flotsam. And he has a new one this year, Robo Baby. So he won three times and then he has a brand new one this year. And guess what? This entire thing is done in watercolors. And this is my favorite page because you can see how he put the watercolor on there with the yellow and how it's kind of blending in with the other colors around it. And just how that watercolor is being used to show that it's a rocket in action. It's amazing. So this one is new this year, but he has won three times. That's incredible. Okay, my last book that I'm gonna show you that was new this year is We Are Water Protectors. And this was illustrated by Michaela Goad. And this is also done in watercolors. And just the fact that they're water protectors and it's painted with watercolors. I mean, it's perfect. How can you not love that? And this was my favorite paint pictures because you have all the different colorful children over here, but then you can see just how she put together those colors for doing an underwater scene. So we just did a really simple, fun painting to get us started. But if you really enjoy this, you could turn this into something like these books right here and illustrate your own book. That would be incredible. So please share with us your finished products. We would love to see them. And I really hope you had some fun today. So I hope you were creative and bold and all of your mistakes were happy accidents. And I hope you had some fun. So again, I'm Miss Jessica from EVPL McCullough and thank you so much for joining me. You can check out all of these books and just give us a call. We'll help you put them on hold. I'll have the list for you so that you can know which ones I talked about. And thank you again. I hope to see you again soon. Bye.